Jeepers. I'm just wondering now, what am I missing? So I've got the secret passageway, which leads to the library. Haven't been in the basement yet, haven't been there yet, because I need some kind of a key. Where do I find this key? I swear it's got something to do with Downstairs now. Something to do with that locker. Crucifix. Oh shit. Holy shit. Yes, I just got the biggest fright. <sighs> just want to try to see if it's that code. It's not. If I'm missing anything right now, da, da, da. let's see. Let's go back here. And that's gonna stay locked until I get a key. Apartments in the library. Okay, we've already seen that in the upstairs hall and the foyer. Huh. In the upstairs hall. Let's just see. So somewhere there is this another secret compartment. Interesting guys. Upstairs hole. Must be here somewhere. Oh. Ouija board. I've never played with one of these before. What is that? Half of Sam's locker combo added to backpack. Okay, we're getting somewhere. Read note. Hello. H-E-L-L-O. Who are you? Oscar. What do you want? To come back. 
Oh, who's Oscar? Okay, so we found the first piece. Um, and that thing said in the foyer, the upstairs, ho the upstairs hall, and the foyer. So let's go to the foyer, guys. Down the stairs. Well, at least the rain is somewhat soothing. Let's see. If I were a secret cabinet, where would I hide? Oh, come on. Can't be that difficult. Hmm. This is the foyer, if I'm not mistaken. Not there. That door is locked. Come on. What the hell? Come on, mate. Alright, let's just go back to the library and see. Maybe. Maybe I read that thing wrong. Yeah, that's not the library. Quite a big house. It's a huge house. Right, gotta go to Dad's office. Oh, back into the abyss. Foyer. Okay, that's... I think that's... Hmm. That's the one in the library. That's the one in the hall. That's the one in the forest of so the stairs. Ah, okay, got it. Let's go back. Okay, we'll go back this way. It's more scenic. Get to see the, the mom's room, the hall, you know, just uh, all the good stuff. I feel like I walk really slow. <laughs> Anyway, let's see. Boom! Private, do not read. The Green Glacier. Heaven at the edge of the world. Allegra and her scouting party peer down warily through the dense canopy of rustling leaves from their perch high in the forest's branches. Mere feet away, sunlight shone brightly off the inner ice walls of the glac glacial basin in which the forest grew. It was strange sight indeed, such lushness juxtaposed with the frigid ice formations. Allegra leapt forward without hesitation, bounding through high, high branches. The first mate had been captured by Green Glacier's Amazonian tribe. His life hung in the balance. We have to hurry! Allegra's party followed behind, moving quickly as a breeze through, as a breeze through the greenery. Allegra landed in the clearing and shouted, Stop! She saw the, the Queen Amazonian up on her pedestal, reaching for the lever that would drop her first mate into the vat below. 
She shouted, No! and flung her saber at the Amazon's reaching hand. But it was too late. The first mate screamed as he fell towards the fire. Towards the water, sorry. <laughs> then splashed down, and all was eerily silent. Allegra looked down, frozen in fear and remorse. She had been a moment too late. But then, from the vat, something began to emerge, like a head, a head of dark brown hair, just like the first mate's, then the shoulders and sleeves of, the, of his coat, soaking wet. But as the figure stood and the water poured down, Allegra saw that the first mate had changed. He was no longer a man at all. In fact, what looked back at her were, were the eyes, the face, and the hair, and the hands of a, and body of a woman. Still in the first mate's clothes, still the first mate, he, she, spoke in a soft, clear voice. Captain? The Amazonian queen said, She is one of us now. She is ours. Allegra drew her magical flintlock pistols from her belt, and her crew readied their swords. Allegra glared into the queen's eyes and said, That's the love of my life, and you can't have her. Ooh. Sweet, so we got the last piece of the code. Completed combination of Sam's locker added to the backpack. So zero five zero one. To open, turn first number, right three times, stop at, turn left, what? To open, turn first number. To open, turn right three times, stop at the first number. Turn left, one full turn passing the first number to stop at the second number. Turn right and stop at third number, pull shackle. Cool, so we got the combination of Sam's locker, which probably contains like dead body parts or something. I don't know. Who knows with this family, you know? Gotta be on your feet. It's probably uh, something nasty. I think it was 05. Wait. 0501. Open. Ba -da -da -da. Ooh. Gentleman. Special Shannon Doherty. Exclusive interview with mogul David Geffen. Finally, Gillian Anderson! Alright, what else do we have here? Stolen shirts. Hmm. Bad girl, hey? Eh? Cigarette pack. Remarkably smooth Morley filter cigarettes. What else is here? Gosh, Sam. Is that it? Ooh, what is that? Lonnie, 94. Lonnie came over today. But everything was... different. Different? She was sitting at my desk chair, and she wouldn't look at me. Finally, I asked her what was going on. She said she felt like she'd done something wrong that night in the city. Like I must think... But I said no. There was nothing wrong. I just wanted to say... But I couldn't find the words. I felt like I was gonna cry, but I wasn't sad. She got up and sat next to me on the bed. I looked at her. Lonnie. Do you think you could ever... And that's when she kissed me. <laughs> Aww. That is so cute, man. That is so cute. Right, guys. So, we've got the key to the basement. Oh god, what is in the basement, guys? There was nothing wrong added to the backpack? 
Who is that? Adding stuff to my backpack. Right, which way was the basement? Was this the basement? Nope. God, no. I think the basement's somewhere over here. Somewhere in Boston. My accent's probably atrocious, guys, but, uh... There's no use in not giving it a go. Giving the old hoo-ha. <gasps> oh, God, no! Oh, God. Oh, God, that's... That's fucking... That's dark. I don't want to go down there. Oh, shit. Holy shit. <sighs> Light. I've never been so so much in love with you, Light. Oh god. Why does it have to be so dark? Whew. At least this isn't like amnesia. That game fucking terrified me. I played it the other day with a friend. Jesus. Jesus. So, we got some potato crisps here. Yum, yum, yum. Lots of fatty, fatty goodness. Some soda can. Three ring binder. And a note. Dear Samantha, I would like to cordially thank you for having me to your abode for the Thanksgiving holiday with your lovely family. I enjoyed the f f fucking potatoes and also it was weird being around your parents for that long but it was pretty fun. How impossible is it for your dad not to be awkward for more than 30 seconds at a time? Very cordially yours, your close friend and confidant, Lonnie D. A fancy man. Yes, yes, quite. <laughs> yes. Dear Miss DeSoto, Allow me to take this opportunity to thank you in kind for being such a gracious host of the festivities in your father's estate. Following the aforementioned meal with my parents, your family's Thanksgiving feast was the more enjoyable of the two events, I must say. I especially appreciated the time I spent with your grandmother, who is a lovely woman with sterling taste and a refined air. Let's do it again, same time next year, shall we? Indeed, Madam Samantha Greenbrier. Hmm. Interesting. Some boxes. Examine drawing. Oh, that's a beautiful drawing. Sam and Lonnie. Aww. I guess Lonnie's the rat. It's different now. I mean, we still hang out all the time like before. But now when no one else is around... Well, you know. So you could say we're dating. Oh. But it's secret. Secret dating? I don't know. I mean, I guess that's the real difference. Now when we get off the phone, or go home for the night, or it's just quiet and we're alone. We say I love you. Oh. That is so cute. If that wasn't a scary sight, guys, I don't know what is. At least the boiler's still working. Maybe everyone just... Maybe someone burned them all. Who knows. Anything interesting here? I see a note. There's letters everywhere. Reed College, January 21st, 1995. Samantha Greenbrier, 
Dear Samantha, congratulations! I am pleased to inform you of your admission to the creative writing track of the Green Reed College Summer Program for Young Co Scholars for its 1995 session. We believe you have much to contribute to the Reed College community based on your portfolio and academic record. I am also pleased to offer you financial aid to cover 75% of the summer's program's tuition and fees. The attached documentation delineates your s schedule optional secondary tracks choices and dormitory assignment please re remember to submit the attached form if you wish to be eligible for one of the three read full-time undergraduate scholarships to be awarded to exemplary students at the end of each summer program we very much look forward to your, your attendance again congratulations on your submission and best wishes from all of us at reed college jody jody monis jody morris Julie Morris. Jeez. Am I going dumb? I'm so stupid sometimes. I was telling Lonnie that I got into my college summer program thing, and I was all making plans like, you should come visit me, stay in my dorm room. But she said, Sam, I ship out on June 6th. I was like, ship out? To where? She said, to basic training. What did you think I was doing all that ROTC stuff for? I guess she's been planning to join the army right after high school since she was, like, 12. And I guess she's really going to do it. So I was like, after graduation, I'm just... never going to see you again? She said, let's just have fun while we can. 